Hey, welcome to the channel. My name is Ahmad, and here we talk about software engineering, tech, and student lifestyle. So if that's something that interests you, please subscribe. Today, we're going to be talking about how to set up a new computer for software development. So let's get started. In this video, the computer I'll be using is a Mac, but if you're using another type of operating system like Windows, don't worry as everything I mentioned should be the same for the most part. So the browser that I think is best for software development is Google Chrome. I say this because Chrome is available on every platform, including mobile devices. It's also the first browser to be supported by plugins. And finally, Chrome passes most browser tests with ease. Developer tools and inspect element is another great feature of Chrome. This comes in handy, especially if you're doing front end development. I do think that it's fair to assume that most people already use Chrome as their default browser and it's probably already one of the first things they install on their new computers. The next thing to install is Homebrew. Homebrew isn't available on Windows as it can only be installed on Mac OS or your Linux system. Homebrew is basically a package manager which makes it easy to install and update applications and utilities on a Mac. It provides an incredibly smooth and straightforward experience for anyone familiar with the command line and it's a good way to learn the command line if you're new to it. For Windows, a good package manager I'd recommend is Chocolatey, so make sure to check it out. Now we need a good terminal. My favorite terminal is iTerm2. This is another thing that can only be installed on a Mac. So the normal terminal that comes installed on Macs aren't really that great, and iTerm is a replacement for the default terminal with some amazing features and customization. Some really neat features on iTerm that come in handy are autocomplete, paste history, and instant replay. Next, we need to install Git. Git is a free open source distributed version control system designed to handle everything from small to very large projects with speed and efficiency. Git is very important to learn, so if it's something you aren't familiar with, I highly recommend you to get an understanding of it as soon as possible. I even wrote an article covering over the main Git commands, which will be linked down below. After installing Git, you then need to install Node and NPM. Node.js is an open source cross-platform backend JavaScript runtime environment. It executes JavaScript code outside of the web browser. NPM is a package manager for Node.js. NPM consists of a command line client, which is also called NPM, and an online database of public and paid private packages called the NPM registry. In order to start writing code, you're going to need a text editor. And the best one out there, which is used by almost all programmers, is Visual Studio Code. Some features of Visual Studio Code include debugging, syntax highlighting, intelligent code completion, snippets, code refactoring, and embedded Git. On top of that, the ability to customize Visual Studio Code is endless. You have thousands of extensions and themes to customize VS Code to make it best suited for you and to your liking. Another text editor is Xcode. So Xcode is really optional. It's only needed if you're doing iOS development, and on top of that, you can only use it on a Mac. But if you are doing some iOS development, Xcode is a great application to use to create your apps. Some alternatives to Xcode are just using Flutter or React Native as you can develop iOS apps without needing Xcode and you can just do it on Visual Studio Code instead. Finally, the last thing you should install is anything relating to the programming language you are learning or using. Some popular programming languages people use when starting out are Python or Java, so it's good to install them onto your machine by going on their website and installing for whatever operating system you use. So yeah, everything I mentioned is what I think you'll need to get you up and running for coding. Obviously, as you get more experience, there are many other applications and software that you can download, but I think these eight should be good enough for a beginner. I know some of the apps and software I mentioned is for Mac users only, but you can definitely find alternatives for them for the operating system that you use. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video was helpful. Please like and subscribe if you found it interesting and follow my socials, which will be linked down below. That's it for me today. Enjoy the holidays and have a great day.